we are now going to look at the temperature effects on rates, rates of reactions. And for a rate, we expect it to have the form of rate equals a constant times concentrations to a power. So we don't see a temperature in that equation. And the temperature is in the rate constant. So we're looking at the temperature effect on rate constants. And what we have found out is that um, the rate constant increases exponentially with temperature. We were able to write that in the equation form. So a rate constant is A, the frequency factor times E raised up to the power of a negative activation energy over RT. Uh, this is called the Arrhenius equation. And if we look at a reaction profile, reactants start off with uh, some level of energy. And the products will have a different level of energy in the compounds. So the difference between those two is the enthalpy of reaction. This is showing a exothermic reaction. So the products have less energy to give that energy off as heat or light. But for the vast majority of all reactions, there's a bump between the reactants and the products. This is the, called the activation energy. So the difference between the initial reactants and that peak is the activation energy, E sub A. And the colliding molecules have to have more energy than that to get past that to get into the product. So as we raise our temperature, we raise the frequency or the fraction, we raise a fraction of collisions that will have sufficient energy to get past that bump. So the exponential equation shows our rate constant increases exponentially with temperature. So we like to make it into a linear form. So by doing the natural log of this, we end up with a form of log K is minus activation energy over the gas constant, Ea over R, times the inverse Kelvin temperature, uh, plus a intercept of log of the frequency factor. So that has our form of y equals mx plus b. It's a straight line. Uh, activation energy is always a positive value. So this is always positive. Enthalpy can be positive or negative, but activation energy is always positive. So the equation tells us we're going to have a negative slope here. So we have a negative slope when we plot log of k versus inverse Kelvin temperature. And the slope is at minus Ea over R. So slope is minus Ea over R. So the activation energy is going to be the slope times minus the gas constant. And that gas constant R is the 8.3145 joules per mole Kelvin. So it's giving us the units of energy joules. So that's what we're looking for. So we're going to be using understanding using these equations. We have a number of questions to uh, ask, ask us to be able to use this equation, solve for one of the missing variables, uh, or to use this equation, again, to solve for the variables. If we have lots of data, we plot it out, um, and then we'll get a slope and an intercept. The intercept can give us our frequency factor. Um, and then the slope can give us our activation energy. We have a two-point version of this, which we'll show later on also. So we take this equation at point two, subtract off the equation at point one, and we'll end up with a form that loses the frequency factor. We'll connect um, two rate constants at two temperatures to the activation energy. So let's move on. To some problems. Check the screen. We're on, okay. 
So we're given a collection of delta H's in activation energies. Asked if um, if they all have the same value of frequency factor of A, which has the fastest initial rate of the same temperature. So the equation is up here. So the rate is going to be dependent upon the rate constant. Uh, same temperature and concentrations. I should put in and concentrations. Same temperature. So our rate constant is going to be dependent upon the activation energy and temperature. We're saying the temperature is all the same. So all that we have is the activation energy. We see that the delta H does not show up in this equation at all. Uh, so the smaller this EA is, this EA over RT is always positive, so the negative always means that our exponent is going to be negative. So a large negative number here is going to make um, uh, this exponential term be very small. So for this to get bigger, we need to have a smaller exponential number up there. So a smaller activation energy will mean a higher rate constant. So that will be our answer. And the reason is that um, activation energy and rate are inverse relationships. So um, a large EA will be a small um, K, a small EA would be a large K. So is, this is the faster rate. So we're looking for a smaller activation energy for the faster rate, the bigger the activation energy, um, the slower the rate will be. And, um, but there's exothermic or endothermic will affect the continuation of the reaction because if it's exothermic, it's gonna raise the temperature, speeding up the reaction. If it's endothermic, it'll lower the temperature, slowing down the reaction. So here's a problem like what we have in our homework. We're given our activation energy for a reaction. The homework will probably state of reaction. It doesn't really matter. Um, so we have an activation energy of 152 kilojoules per mole, a rate constant of 0 0.830 uh, inverse seconds. And it could be the only similarity associated with this. It will not change the process. And that's at a temperature of 950 Kelvin. So what's our frequency factor, the value of A? So we're going to take the exponential form of the equation and solve for A. So A is going to be the rate constant divided by the exponential term, E minus EA over RT. We stick in our numbers and we want to, of course, watch our units. Um, the exponential term has no units, so it means all the term, um, units in this EA over RT have to cancel off. So the big ones that are, 8.3145 is joules, and we often give you our activation energy in kilojoules. So we convert kilojoules into joules, so 152,000 joules divided by R8.3145, divided by the temperature 950 Kelvin. We went through a calculator, so our exponential is always a negative term here. So we end up with a minus 19.24. Our final answer will give us um, 1.89 times 10 to the power of 8. The units of A are always the same units of the rate constant. So they always have matching units. So in this case, uh, inverse seconds. Again, if we have molarity associated with this, it does not change the uh, problem. So combining this top part and this part, that is a separate question in the homework. So we're given our activation, our activation energy, our rate constant at one temperature. 
nor ask what the rate constant is in another temperature. We don't mention the frequency factor in the question at all. So there's two ways to solve it. One way is to solve for the frequency factor. We do that up here. And once we have that, we now put it into the equation k equals a e to the exponential term, run it through, and we get to, in this case, 4.30 times 10 to minus 10 um, inverse seconds, same always matching units. But we could have used the two point form of the equation. So the two point form log of k2 over k1 equals minus ea over r, one over t2 minus one over t1. So we never solve for a at all in this one, uh, but we just put our numbers in. When we do this, um, remember that logs, if their ratio is greater than one, logs are positive. If they're less than one, logs are negative. Um, so you just wanna make sure you don't drop your negatives when you solve this problem. Um, and I'll come back with an example on the next board uh, showing this using this equation. Another uh, type of question, we plot the rate constant, log of the rate constant versus inverse top, uh, temperature. And we find that the graph is linear. And we get a, a slope or a um, slope intercept equation from that the slope intercept, you're going to have two numbers. You have to make sure you know it's the slope you want and not the intercept for our rate constant uh, for our activation energy. So in this case, we're asked for the activation energy. And that is going to be the slope is minus Ea over R. Solve for Ea, we get the slope times minus R will give us our activation energy. So R, 8.3145. We have a negative in the equation. We're gonna have a negative on the slope. The two negatives will cancel giving us a positive activation energy. Now we finished this calculation. We have 79,154 joules per mole, the same units as our R. We often ask for our answers in kilojoules per mole. That's the typical range. Uh, so this comes down to 79.2 kilojoules per mole. So this is the, one of the easier questions, as long as we keep track that we want the slope, not the intercept, when we're looking for our activation energy. So I have one more of these. Oh, this one, let me adjust my screen a bit. Mm -hmm. Doesn't hang like the other two for me. Check that screen. We've got everything visible. Okay. So if we measure our rate constant at two different temperatures, so we got a 0.000211 inverse seconds, it won't matter if we got molarity in the units at all. That's at 32 Celsius, the rate constant of 0.822 inverse seconds at 87 Celsius. What is the activation energy? So uh, this is using the two point form of the equation. Uh, and uh, of course we have to use Kelvin. So we convert our 32 Celsius into um, Kelvin, 305 Kelvin, 87 Celsius is 360 Kelvin. And this ones and twos are matching pairs, but it doesn't matter what we use up here. So I just like to keep this ratio greater than one so the log is positive. It makes it a little bit easier for me to track the negatives when they're all on one side of the equation. Uh, R, of course, 8.3145. So we break this down in the parenthesis. I saw the parenthesis is one of my first things. So that comes. 5.009 times 10 to the minus 4. So up here, we're doing addition to converge. So we go from two significant digits up to three. Here we have three. So I'm just going to carry a little bit more in this subtraction here. So one extra digit 
just to make sure I can get three, three good significant digits from the final answer. So I reduce that um, parenthesis down. And it usually is a very small number here. Um, I made the ratio be greater than one, so the log of it comes out to be a positive. In this case, positive 8.268. Logs come out with no units. So the units within the uh, parenthesis have to cancel off. So we solve this equation. Now we have three numbers to rearrange. Uh, move the negative over, so we got a negative 8.268. Multiply the 8.3145 across and then divide the 5.009 times 7 is 4 across. Run that through the calculator and I get, get 137,239. Obviously too many uh, digits here, but that's joules per mole. We tend to like kilojoules per mole, so I take it down to the three digits and it's 137 kilojoules per mole. Uh, so that should cover all the types of problems we hope that you'll see doing um, the temperature effects of race of reactions, the arranged equation. Um, well, that's it.